Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's slow stitching video, we're going to use bubble wrap in our work. Bubble wrap is that packing material that you use when you want to ship something fragile. It's filled with air, little bubbles, little pockets in it. And it makes for interesting use with stitching because you can focus something inside of that bubble. In my case, in today's video, I'm going to use threadlings or orts, the leftover thread scraps you have when you do your stitching. I just save them up throughout the year and then I use them in different projects. And here's one use for those threadlings. Now I like to take bubble wrap, I cut a little hole in the back, stuff it in and then use it in my work. And I'll show you my process a little more detailed in a moment. So this is how the project started. You just start by filling whatever number of holes you want on your bubble wrap. In this case, I use little threadlings, little thread scraps or orts. Here I use little scraps of fabric. So it gives a different effect. This is a little more nuanced. It doesn't matter. You can also use very small bubble wrap as well. Now the key to the bubble wrap is to make sure that you have the bubble wrap where each section is individually sealed around itself. Most bubble wrap is this way, but in some of the packaging that I recently got, they sent this great bubble wrap, which has an interesting pattern, but each of these channels is filled with air. So if this hole was to be punctured, the entire channel will lose its air and it becomes very hard to fill. So it can be done, but I find just for this process, the individually sealed pieces of plastic wrap are what's most effective. Now here's how I use my pieces. They're quite interesting and they make a focal point. They make a way to showcase a color, add a texture and add height to your work. So here are some examples using this technique. Here I have like a little button filled with the threadlings that makes something a little dimensional as you can see by the size and I coordinate it with some other interesting circular elements on this piece. Now for this one, I created them into a row and I filled them with different colors to make an interesting gradient. It's not a technique or a process I'd use often, but it is definitely something really intriguing and there's something interesting about it. So what I do is I find the bubbles that I wanna use and you can use one bubble, you can use a row, you can use a cluster. It's completely up to you. So these are the large buttons of bubble wrap. Now some have already been deflated just by for shipping, but others are intact and those are the ones you want to use. So if you wanted to use just a few or just say two, just take your scissors and cut around it. You want to leave a nice little border. Best way to cut around it is to keep your bubble wrap taut. Otherwise you'll see what I'm doing here is I'm kind of chewing through it. And I like to create a little boundary. So I get rid of the scrap that I have and I have two intact little bubbles here. I just take a little pokey tool, you can even use a pair of scissors, and I go in through the back, the flat end, and I'll just create a little hole. It has to be a little bigger if I'm using a fabric strip, but a little hole will work for the threadlings. From there I can just take some threadlings, just little orts or fabric scraps, and just stuff them inside. You can choose by color. You can just grab a small little amount. And then I like to just kind of roll it loosely. From there, I just hold it up against the first one that I want to put it in. Take a non-pokey tool. This is just the other end of a bamboo skewer. And I just work it in. It's easier to work in when you have smaller amounts of thread. But just persevere, keep doing it. And it will eventually fill it up. You can decide how full you want it. I like it to be nice and full and hold its shape, but I'm sure there are uses you can come up with where you don't need it to be quite so full. And if you're going to use fabric scrap, you just make sure you have a nice small piece of fabric here. This is just a little strip. And again, I bring it to that area where I already made the hole and I just work it in. It helps to have a tool that isn't sharp so you can really get that fabric in through that opening. And you don't want it to be too large an opening.
and the degree that you stuff it, well, that's up to you. If you want a really full bubble or you just want a bubble showcased inside the little clear plastic. Now, it's kind of an unusual technique. It's not something you might use every day, but it does help in your work and it is an unexpected element. Now, I like to use them in rows. You can make them into a traffic light or just a little gradient, just something unexpected and unusual. That depth, that texture, and that perfectly round shape are very interesting in your work. Now, when I want to actually use it and I have my little stuffed bubble, I don't stitch through the bubble. I stitch around it. So now to stitch it down as I did here or here, I would take the backing that I want to put it down on and set it in position. Now, if I wanted to stitch the two of these together, I have a couple of options. I can take a piece of fabric that will fit over it and I'll just trace my mark of where I want the opening to be. So I know I want my button to be here. So I'll just kind of make some marks onto the fabric, just roughly like this. And then over here in the same thing. And then I know I would cut those pieces of fabric out so that it would fit neatly right over. The other option is to make a little strip where it will fit neatly. So again, I would just eyeball that shape that I want to fit in and cut out that shape. And that way I can put the fabric over it. So here I've cut that opening in the fabric. I can just lay it down on my piece, pin it into place, and I'm pinning through the bubble wrap as well as that fabric that I want it to hold down. And when I have that nice and neat, I can start stitching. So I'll just take my needle and thread and stitch all the way around. I can decide if I want to stitch through here as well. And I can add additional pieces of fabric as I'd like. Over here, I just made a few stitches with just some red thread to hold it in place. This one, you can see a little more of the wrapping than this one. So it's really up to you what look you're going for. When you create your stuffed bubble wrap, if you find that you've cut a hole too big, don't worry about it. Just take a piece of scotch tape and tape over that hole after you've stuffed your bubble. You're not gonna stitch through it, so it won't be a problem. So that's how I use bubble wrap in my slow stitching. It's completely unconventional and a little unusual. Have you used this technique and do you think you'd use it now? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe.